Good morning, this is a Tuesday morning update on Major Hurricane Ian. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions. Please consult the National Hurricane Center or your local weather office for the latest information for where you're at. So taking a look at the latest infrared satellite imagery and we can see that Ian remains a very, very powerful hurricane as it moves over Cuba this morning with a pretty well-defined eye despite the land interaction, which we all know, which would have have very little effect on the system surrounded by a very intense deep area of convection surrounding the eye here uh, the, these dark gray colors indicate cloud tops about negative 75 celsius looking at, looking at the visible satellite imagery we could also see that the eye is somewhat cloud filled but this should soon change as soon as the system re-emerges over water which will happen in the next 45 minutes to an hour. We have other ways that we could see Major Hurricane Ian, and this is from the Mark Missenbaum FSU website with the Doppler radar in Key West, Florida, showing us where the eye of Hurricane Ian currently is and where it's moving. And not only that, we can see how powerful the eye wall actually is moving over the western tip of Cuba here with the yellows, indicating we have a very, very intense eye wall with lightning strikes going on within the northern and eastern eye wall at this time, which indicates to me that the system is not giving up just yet with how strong it is. And it won't be long before this moves over water and it re-intensifies pretty substantially before it gets very close to the coast of Florida. We were fortunately able to get some recon data from the NOAA P-3 Orion aircraft and as they made a few passes through the center we have air pressure at 953 millibars and on their last pass the pressure did come up a few more millibars probably at about 956 because the system's likely weakening just a little bit as it moves over this landmass but again, as soon as this eye wall gets over water, it will likely re-intensify pretty significantly into possibly a Category 4 hurricane later on today, most likely. Looking at the latest National Hurricane Center forecast, and as we can see, this is now going to be a major hurricane at landfall near Tampa, Florida, as early as Thursday morning, where hurricane warnings are issued. We have tropical storm warnings for most of Florida. And we also have tropical storm watches and hurricane watches for these areas. So this needs to be taken really, really seriously. And I will be live streaming on this this afternoon right around 4 or 4.30 Pacific Daylight Time. Winds are at 125 miles an hour. And it is moving to the north at 12 miles an hour. But again, at this time, it won't matter where it's moving because we all know it is likely to hit Florida as early as, again, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, or if not even early Thursday morning as a very, very intense, powerful major hurricane. Looking at the latest, most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, there is a 90 to 100% chance now over Tampa. So we know for sure there will be tropical storm force winds arriving on that area in Tampa as early as about 2 in the morning on Wednesday or 8 in the evening on Wednesday as the system gets closer and closer. So you need to make sure you have all and everything prepared. Make sure you have your windows boarded up just in case if they get destroyed and everything in your house gets destroyed as well because this is looking like a very, very potentially catastrophic hurricane. Hurricane force wind potential chances here have gone up a little bit. So right off the coast of Florida or Tampa, there is now a 50 to 70% chance of hurricane force winds as early as again, Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening as the powerful eye wall gets very dangerously close to Florida. And this is likely to now move on shore um, in Florida by Wednesday night. So again, make sure you have everything prepared because this is looking like a catastrophic weather event, possibly unsurvivable in some sense. So I'm just gonna read a couple of key messages here so this video does not end up being like 20 plus minutes long. So life-threatening storm surge, hurricane force winds, flash floods and possible mudslides are expected in portions of Western Cuba today. But again, looking at the last, um, 
kind of key point here. Heavy rainfall in Florida will increase across the Florida Keys and the South Florida region on Tuesday, spreading into Central to Northern Florida Wednesday and Thursday, and the Southeastern region on Friday and Saturday. Uh, and yeah. Um, likely causing flash and urban flooding and small stream flooding. Considerable flooding is expected across central Florida into central and southern Georgia and coastal South Carolina with significant prolonged river flooding expected across the central and northern Florida regions. We're talking about urban flooding. We're also talking about potentially, potentially, and I don't want to say this, unsurvivable storm surge impacts. And we're also talking about um, serious, serious wind damage from hurricane force winds, again, that could reach category three intensity, and we could see category four intensity wind gusts. So serious, serious um, destruction with Hurricane um, Ian as it gets very close to the coast of Florida and makes landfall eventually. So the latest storm surge forecast right now is 5 to 10 feet now for Tampa Bay and also for Charlotte Harbor. This was updated last night. Um, if you are in the um, Kaloskali, I think that is, 4 to 7 feet of storm surge, Key West and Card, uh, Cardbound Bridge. We're also talking about, again... Subst some substantial um, storm surge impacts there, three to five feet, okay, and also um, if you are in the, um, let's see what else do we have here, north of Tampa, we have five to eight feet of storm, sur storm surge that is anticipated, so again, really take this seriously, everyone, the storm surge is going to be something else, the flooding is going to be absolutely horrendous, uh, destructive, unsurvivable. The wind is one thing, but the flooding is really going to take a toll on everyone and the population. So there is now a moderate risk for flash flooding, and this could go up to a high risk. I think it will in portions of Tampa Bay, Orlando, perhaps even in Jackson might get a high risk of flash flooding out of this. So again, make sure you look at the latest products from the National Hurricane Center because this is really, really serious. We're talking again about a moderate to maybe high risk for flash flooding. Rainfall amounts on this is about five to uh, or 10 to 15 inches in Jacksonville. We could see 15 to almost 20 inches of rain in Tampa Bay. Orlando, right around 6 to 10 inches of rain. Tallahassee, 2 to 4 inches of rain. Miami, about 2 to 4 inches of rainfall. Um, Charlotte, Wilmington, 6 to maybe close to 10 inches of rainfall. So it's not just Florida here. We're also talking about the Carolina coast that could get some very intense rainfall as, again, the center does this and it gets really close to Jacksonville. So again, the impacts, the rain, the moisture goes along with it. The Atlanta area, Montgomery, Birmingham, right around 1 to almost 3 inches of rain. Knoxville, Chattanooga, Tennessee, about 1 to 2 inches inches of rain is anticipated. There is storm surge warnings that you all need to take this seriously of. Uh, for the Tampa area, clear water, I will have a full breakdown of, on this um, situation at 4 to 4.30 today, or right around that time when I do my live stream. We are going to go into absolute in-depth detail as much as we can for you all. We're going to look at live recon data. We're going to look at live satellite data. We're going to even pull up a few cameras and look at live radar data as this system gets near and near to the Florida coast, okay? So storm surge warnings are currently issued for Cape Coral, uh, Cape Coral uh, Port Charlotte, Sarasota, Naples, also down here across southernmost Florida where there is a storm surge watch that is issued. So again, a storm surge watch means there is going to be significant inundation possible. A storm surge warning means there will be significant inundation and storm surge likely within about 36 hours. So you need to take this extremely seriously again of the storm surge warnings. Also, the latest intensity forecast is right on par. A 140 mile an hour hurricane is still anticipated. So a category four all the way through the next 24 hours is being indicated on the latest NHC forecast. So again, this is still expected to be a catastrophic 
Category 4 hurricane very close to Florida in about 36 hours. When it gets close, it should be down to about 125, maybe 130 perhaps, or even down to 120. But it won't matter. It's not going to matter. 120, 130, it won't matter. Impacts will be catastrophic and unsurvivable perhaps in some areas. In many areas, they're going to be life-threatening. We're also talking about severe weather. This is the day two forecast from the SPC with a 5% chance of tornadoes, a 5% chance of large hail and damaging winds with this. So with these rain bands that move across the Florida area, we are going to possibly see significant tornado production as these move through. So again, it's not going to just be the damaging winds just from the hurricane itself or the heavy rainfall, but the tornadoes and water spouts are also anticipated over this area. This is a very serious situation. When you have tornadoes and stuff, that will add in just more destruction than the hurricane itself, okay? So that's the look at the Storm Prediction Center. Now the question really remains, how strong will Ian get after it moves off of Cuba? We know it's strong now, but how strong will it recover? How much can this get? And who will get impacted? So here's a look at the latest HWARF model. I am not looking at the global models today because they are really underdoing this. And so we are going to look at the, eight, um, the hurricane models instead. So this is for about um, 12 Z Zulu Tuesday. The eye is just moving off the coast. That's what recon indicates. So this is right on par of moving offshore here within the next maybe 45 minutes or so or even sooner and as it does so the air pressure is going to remain at 950 millibars by the way it went down to 949 last night but the pressure is going to drop again we're talking about 943 millibars by late tonight with winds at around 140 miles an hour okay between cuba and florida this is still offshore this is still going to re-intensify pretty quickly um, and recover substantially. And then by Wednesday morning, air pressure down at 938 millibars with 130 mile an hour winds potentially. Look at this. Look at the wind field on the H Wharf model. This is very concerning, very close to Tampa Bay. And this does hit Tampa Bay perhaps uh, with winds Again, at 130, this specific model has winds that could reach about 145, maybe 150 miles an hour. That is absolutely devastating. Very serious. We got offshore winds over Tampa, so don't freak out if the water gets slow that, oh, it's not going to be storm surge because the backside of this will move in and there will be substantial storm surge. Believe it or not, 10 plus feet of storm surge as this moves on shore. And not only that, uh, when this is not even that far off the coast, we could be looking at uh, 130 mile an hour winds right along the Tampa Bay coastline with pressures down to about 940 to 945 millibars. So this is going to be a monster. It's going to be a major hurricane when this moves on shore and then eventually moving over the rest of Florida during the day on Thursday and into Friday. But wow, this is going to be crawling. This is going to potentially stall out, which will make the situation even more worse. We don't want that. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the models indicate that it's going to slow down really significantly as this um, kind of gets buckled up within the steering flow. And by the time we go into Saturday, it's over Georgia and the Carolinas at a much weaker system, but still a tropical storm potentially. And so again, this is going to be with us for a while, at least maybe through Saturday. Now, what does the HMOD model show? So this is a different model output, also indicating that the I is going to be moving offshore right around the same time that the H wharf has it. But also the HMOD takes a little bit longer for this to intensify. Thank goodness it's not as intense as the last run, but we know that does not mean that it's not going to be as strong. This is going to be a very powerful hurricane. Nevertheless, still a 130 mile an hour system by this afternoon. Okay, and then getting close to the Florida coast. Look at this, 127 knot winds. That is a mid to high end category 
for Hurricane. And this gets onto the, or over Sarasota at 947 millibars potentially with winds that are at about category three to category four intensity based on this model solely, okay? There has been a little trend here to the south, but not by much. This is still going to be a devastating event for the Tampa coast and the Tampa Bay area, including for Sarasota, Naples, Florida. Again, needs to take this one seriously. And then by Friday, it's gonna be moving over um, South Carolina and North Carolina, and it's gonna really weaken as it does so. Rainfall totals based on the European model are pretty exceptional. Look at this. There could be as much as 10 to 15 inches of rain with some areas that could get 20 inches of rain. But again, please take this with a grain of salt. This could be lesser, this could be more. Just follow the WPC, um, yeah. Yeah, the Weather Prediction Center, that is, um, for the latest on how much rainfall you're actually going to get. Because, again, they know a lot more than what these models do, in, in a sense. And so these models are to be taken with a grain of salt with how much rainfall you can see. But nevertheless, that's quite a bit of rainfall over Central Florida. The GFS model has literally 50 inches of rainfall. That is not going to happen. In fact, I should not even be showing you all this at all on this YouTube video because I don't want to scare anyone. I seriously do not. And I'm already scaring you all because I just said 53 inches, which is, there's like a one hundredth of a percent chance there's going to be 53 inches in Tampa, Florida or Central Florida. All right, but boy, that would be substantial if this did come true. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.